Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are interested in learning how to 3D print your own vehicle, whether you want to make it remote controlled like this 2005 Toyota 4Runner, or you want to learn just how to 3D print the vehicle itself, stay tuned. In today's video, I'm walking through how I made this vehicle and I will be doing a demo of it in action in just a moment. So before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so I'm going to walk through this video. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick demo first. And I do know that these tires are a little obnoxiously large, but I will show you one of the benefits to this in a moment. Now, I do want to note that for today's video, I am going to be walking through using a couple of different pieces of technology, including soldering irons, 3D printers, things of that nature. So make sure that you are following any and all relevant safety precautions and things of that nature when trying to attempt any of this yourself. This video is for educational purposes only. All right, so let's jump into the demo. We have our remote control here. So if we want to bring the car forward, we can bring the car back. We also have the ability, if we were interested, we can flip the car, which is why I kept the obnoxiously large wheels. So you'll see we have the ability to kind of rock it back and forth and we can flip it. We also have the ability to hold down or up and rotate the vehicle. So basically it'll function just like the original remote control car and I had to pull some parts for it. So today's video is walking through the actual build of this vehicle, including some of the issues that I came across when getting this build set up. So let's go ahead and jump straight in. All right, so before we jump into the actual print process, I wanna walk through how I got these files. Hopefully this will help you find the vehicle or files for the vehicle that you're interested in. So I just typed in 3D print Toyota 4Runner, um, although this is for the 4Runner specifically, you should be able to type in the make and model of different vehicles and find them online. Just make sure you're verifying that you're using authentic download links so that you don't download anything malicious. So when we scroll through, you'll see we have a couple of different options, such as one of the older generations, a newer one, and then this one right here. I think this is the one that I purchased. So basically what you can do is you can scroll through when you find the download link. Typically you can view the folder details and view comments from past people who have printed and created it. But you can see when you scroll through the files here, you can see the body from a couple of different angles. And now what we're gonna do is walk through what I actually got when I downloaded it. Again, I think this was the one that I purchased. So you'll see we ended up with a base plate, which is the bottom of the vehicle, if I'm not mistaken. Then we have the body, the interior, which will have the seats, the steering wheel, all that stuff attached as one piece. We have a single rim and a single tire, which you would just duplicate, and then the window glasses if you decide to install those. So I'm gonna show what I did. So I used stock settings for everything. So I just opened it up in Cura. If you're interested in learning about how to do your first 3D print, I have a link, or I will put a link in the description, and I also have a separate series or playlist on my channel with more information. But basically, you'll see we have this vehicle here. So when we click it, it obviously doesn't fit in the actual printer. So when we scroll around, you'll see it's much larger than the print bed itself. Now you have different options here. So what I did was I selected the vehicle and I tried to find a good amount to scale by. So I used uniform scaling and I scaled it to 30 and I hit enter. Now, when I did this, I just tried to center it in the bed. So when you click it again, go to move so you don't accidentally scale when you're trying to drag. And then I just tried to center it on the actual bed itself. Now, I'm going to go um, after this, I'm going to show you the actual print itself. But you need to pay attention to the supports. Um, I went with default settings for everything. So basically what I did was I printed the body, the interior, the rims, and the tires, and I scaled all of them down by 30, or I scaled them all by 30 here. And then using uniform scaling, it scales all sides. If you want to try any kind of custom scaling, I wouldn't be able to advise on that. So I just set the value here to 30 to get it to be relatively small and makes it about toy size. Now, another thing to note, again, as I was saying on the supports, since I use the default settings for this, there are basically the entire inside of the vehicle is going to require supports. 
I wasn't paying too much attention when I was removing these, and I didn't realize how thin the walls of the vehicle are when you scale it. So be careful with your settings, and if you choose to scale by, uh, go down to like 30% or so, just bear in mind that when you're removing the supports, it's going to be very difficult, and you are going to run the risk of damaging the body of the vehicle. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump straight into the actual build process or the printing of the vehicle. Okay, so jumping into part of the print, so we are wrapping things up. I think I have about five hours left. So you can see even scaled down by about 30 or to about 30 percent. We are still looking at just shy of about two days. And you can see on the Creality Ender 3 V2, we are taking up a decent portion of the plate. I think this will come out to be a pretty average size remote control car. So you'll see that we have the back of the Forerunner here, the front up there, and quite a bit of support in the middle. Overall quality seems to be pretty solid, so I'm looking forward to seeing what this looks like when it comes out. So we'll go ahead and jump forward a bit to that. All right, so I went ahead and scraped it. So you can see we have the body here with the windows being hollowed out. So now we'll need to go ahead and get rid of the supports and kind of clean things up here a bit. But things came out, I think, pretty good overall. Once we get this cleaned up, I think it'll look much better. All right, so I cleaned it up a little bit more. You'll see there are still some rough edges. Overall, I think it looks solid. One thing to note is this is much thinner than I thought. So I scaled it down quite a bit so you can see that I cracked it a bit when I was removing some of the supports, just being a little rough with it. So I would highly recommend that you take that into account if you're gonna follow this project and do it yourself. Other than that though, uh, just think that some of the detail was lost when I scaled it down. I mean, you can still definitely tell from the side that it's a forerunner body, but I just think that I probably could have paid a little bit more attention when scaling it. And I will go through the process of sanding it. I'm not sure if I wanna to try to put in some plastic windows or just kind of leave it open like this. I'll, I'll probably just leave it open, but I do have some additional sanding and things to do, which I may just wait until the end. But at the very least, the initial first part has come out pretty well. All right, so I did the rims really quickly. I just duplicated the single rim in Cura. So basically it took about two hours and 24 minutes. You'll see we have the rims here. So we will just sand them down a bit to see how they came out overall and remove those supports. And then probably gonna have to do a little bit of additional sanding just to get them to fit in the tires okay. All right, so next up we have everything preheated here. So we have the tires that are duplicated. So there are going to be four tires in this single print. Looks like we're probably gonna be estimating around two to three hours for this. So pretty similar time to the rims again when we have it set to that 30% scale. So this will update shortly, but we'll go ahead and let this print and then come back when it's done. Okay, so the tires are done. It took about 6 hours and 26 minutes total. So we'll go ahead and get all the supports off and get started with the underside of the vehicle. Alright, so we are part of the way through printing the exterior. Now what I'm going to be doing while this is printing is trying to fit the rims into the wheels. So I'll be walking through that process shortly. You'll see this one's going to take around 24 plus hours, 25 hours or so. So let's go ahead and get the rims set in the wheels and see how we can get those secured. All right, so I'm leaving the camera off the tripod for this part. Just wanted to walk through the process that I'm following for the wheels. This is definitely not the best process but just wanted to walk you through what I'm doing. So we have the wheels, I haven't sanded them or cleaned them up much. Basically what I did was I took the wheels and the rims, I removed the supports, which is a little bit more difficult than I thought. You'll see that the rim is sticking out a bit so we can push them in. Once they've been sanded and cleaned out a bit, it fits relatively well. Unfortunately, there are some gaps on the inside. Now, for a later video, I may look into painting this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're interested, but for right now, we're just trying to get everything together and get it functional. So since we have the motors coming in tomorrow, we're gonna try to get this taken care of quickly. Instead of using a 3D print gun, what we're going to be using is something like this extra filament here, and then a soldering iron. Again, not a good way to do this and not something I would recommend, but basically we are just plastering on the excess filament and then we'll be able to sand over top of it and basically just trying to kind of seal it off. 
So you'll see, again, it doesn't look incredible, uh, but once we've sanded it and painted it, you won't really notice. So again, we're gonna be doing this for all of these. So you can see all of the rims, they fit relatively well, but you'll see we have this ridge and I'm melting the ridge to the tire. And then we will be filling in that gap with a little bit of this extra filament here so that they're all basically just sealed off and looking like this. Um, again, this one's really bad, so I'll be able to smooth this over with the soldering iron. And I may try to smooth over the outsides as well. And it's interesting though to see that you have some tread on the tires. And another reason I'm not focusing too much on this is I may end up putting some slightly larger tires on this if I get the suspension and everything built. So just to kind of help you see what this looks like for scale. Here's the Forerunner itself. So the tires look like they would be basically just the proper size, but these 3D printed tires are probably not gonna do very well when driving this thing around outside. So what we'll probably end up doing later on is upgrading the tires, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on them. I really just wanna get something functional that makes this look like a legitimate model. So we'll go ahead and get these taken care of while we have the other parts printed, and then we'll keep going from there. All right, so the interior is done. We'll have to remove some supports on this, but you can see this one took about 12 hours. So last thing we need to do is the bottom plate and then get everything assembled. All right, so we are looking at potentially wrapping things up as far as the printing is going and looking to actually build this vehicle now. So as I previously mentioned, these were 3D printed with PLA Plus, so they're a hard material. And instead of reprinting with a softer material, I'm looking at potentially repurposing a remote control car. So the original plan, which will still technically work for just printing out the mock vehicle, would just be to have these tires or wheels and then I'll put the seats on. I was just getting the supports off of this interior piece so I can stick these back on. But you'll see we have the majority of the vehicle here. So we have the body and then we could just slip the interior in. Now the plan from this point would be to print out the bottom plate to secure everything and then finalize with putting on the wheels. However, that would mean making the entire toy suspension portion ourselves. So there are a few options for that, which I'll go over very quickly. So we have all of the parts over here. I'm going to potentially avoid getting the bottom plate printed out just because I don't know how much space I'm gonna have. So I was able to pick this up on Amazon for about, I wanna say 13 to $15. So you'll see in here, we have a ton of miscellaneous gears, uh, looks like some rubber bands, maybe a pulley or two, and then what would essentially act as our axle, which in this case is basically just a metal bar. So this is just a ton of different pieces that you would use to make random miscellaneous electronic parts. We also have some switches and just random pieces. So we have uh, basically just some wiring for some nine volt batteries, um, some additional tires in here, which we're gonna look at sizing on this. And then we have some other miscellaneous stuff like the heat wrap for the tubing, some wiring, propellers and miscellaneous parts, and then some wiring diagrams, and then what look like some holders for these motors. So basically what I was going to be doing originally for this install was have one of these motors basically power the front or rear axle. And the idea is when you wire it positive, negative, it'll go one direction. And then when you inverse that, it goes the opposite. And then the plan was to hook that to this, which I bought off Amazon for about, I think it was $13. So I'll show you what this is and we may use it for this project and we may use it for another. Basically what we have here is our remote control. So you'll see positive and negative for a battery and then forward, backward, left, right, and then the on switch. And here we have another on switch, but we have the positive and negative for the battery, the left, right, and forward and backward. So basically the forward and backward wires would go to one of these motors, which would be forward and backward for the vehicle. And then the left and the right would go to a second one, which probably isn't the best use for a high powered motor, but it would work in this case. And basically we would then have forward, backward, left, right. Now we do have some size constraints with something like this. So in theory, we could put one under here where the engine would go and then the other one in the trunk, but then we'd still need some space for the batteries, but it is what it is. So this is one option. The second option, which I'm looking at, although the tires are huge, would be 
taking things apart from this toy here because it looks like it would fit reasonably well. So as you can see, sizing would actually be on par with basically making this a forerunner slash massive lifted truck. So I'm going to look at potentially doing that as well. It would save us a little bit of time, but again, we do have those axles here that we could use if we wanted to. So I will go ahead and try those out and keep you updated. Okay, so just to give you a quick demo or example of how this is going to work, you'll see we have our two AAA batteries hooked up to the remote, which has forward, backward, left, right. And then we have a 9 volt, which I wouldn't recommend using. This is supposed to only be used with, I believe, a 3 or 6 volt. But we have it set up so we have positive and negative connected to our battery here. And then we have our little motor. So the motor, again, has forward, back, left, and right. So just to show you how that would work, you'll see that pressing these buttons, even though it is completely wireless, will start or stop that function. Now, it may not be visible in the video, but it is making this go two different directions. So basically just reversing the way the power would go. So to give you an example, this one is going forward. And then if we were to reverse it, the air is now coming backwards. So if we put it in reverse, you should be able to see different pieces getting blown around. Again, you can just kind of understand that, again, these two buttons, it's just changing the direction the motor turns, which would be forward or backward, or in our case, left and right also. So we have this setup, which we'll be using a little bit later. So we're gonna need to figure out how to place that. And I did wanna give a quick update on the build itself, as you can see, we have a lot of stuff going on here. I was originally going to use this and just kind of take a shortcut and make it easier, but I figured there's no fun in that. So what we are going to be doing is making some modifications. So I'm going to try to avoid touching the body of the vehicle because I don't want to use the soldering iron or any kind of heat source and mess that up. So what I did was I did some touch-ups on the inside, which we're never going to see for the panels and pieces that I cracked when I was removing the supports. And then what we're going to be doing is making some modifications to the interior. So the plan that I have for this currently is to take what was going to be just the inside of the vehicle and I'm going to modify it a bit to fit the motor and the tires. So this is going to be what would normally be just a solid rear axle. It's going to be made up of basically two in a sense, so it's almost like one cut in half. Um, so basically the idea here is this one's going to be receiving the power. I was originally going to try to do a single axle. But the problem with that is I would have to makeshift some kind of a suspension, kind of like this. And my biggest concern, having both wheels on the back powered, is if at any point this gear fell out of alignment. So for example, if instead of this wheel here, I decided to use this gear. If at any point these, which are very, very small, fell out of alignment and we're talking about a plastic toy i would end up having some issues and i don't want to have to go and 3d print some custom parts right now so what i decided to do instead was use the wheels that came with this package we'll save this kind of makeshift suspension most likely for the front of the vehicle because we are going to need to turn left and right now that is a maybe. My biggest concern with that is we have a very limited amount of space right now so what i've gone ahead and done is I have it set up and I'm going to go ahead, probably use some industrial strength glue to get this stuck in. I just wanna make sure that they're kind of lined up, but this lines up with the plastic uh, support here. So I'm just gonna keep that on. And the idea is I'm gonna have this be the rear of the car. And then these two wheels will basically just power it forward and backward. And what I'm going to do, I'm debating on if I need the bottom from the 3D print or not, but the idea here is this would line up with the running boards. So the plan would be, the bottom is not gonna look pretty, uh, but the plan would be something like this. These will mount right here, and then the inside will just look the way it is, and then we would have the front axle run through here. 
So the end result would look something like this. Obviously the rims are not gonna match, but then these back ones would be receiving power. The problem that I'm running into right now with something like this is space limitations, not only for the front, uh, for the receiver, which will technically fit where the engine would go in a normal car, but the space limitation we're running into is for the second motor, which would control the left and right action. So I'm thinking about a couple of different options here. The first option that we have is going to be similar to how this car functions. So what I could do is have two motors in the back controlling the left and right wheel, and then just have the axle on the front uh, basically just be static. And then each motor would propel it forward or backwards a certain direction, similar to what that vehicle does. So that is one option because I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit a second motor up here to allow this to move left and right. So we'll have to kind of figure that out when we get there. But at the very least, we'll be able to go forward and backward with this setup. And again, something like this would allow this axle to be kind of stiff and still mount into the vehicle itself. So let's keep moving. All right, so I'm off the tripod just to show you a quick update of where I stand with all these various parts. So you can see I have the receiver in the trunk and then I have the remote right here. These are the ones that I purchased online. So they are currently working as expected. So you can see when I hit the forward and the backward button, it does propel the vehicle or would. Now, the issue that I ran into, I had everything wired. I was about to glue the front axle with the front motor for the steering in. Then when I was testing it out just to see if it would move forward and backward, I found out that with the nine volt battery, the vehicle is too heavy. And without it, it's still very, very slow. So I looked at this remote control vehicle that I had, and I was actually pulling off the sides just to kind of see how things worked. And you'll see they have a quite a few different gears in here that are going to be used. Um, I wouldn't say similar to a transmission, but it definitely helps to give it that uh, little bit of power that it needs to propel it forward. So what I'm going to end up doing, because I can't take these off just due to this sheer size and the limitations I'm working with here. So what I'm actually going to end up doing at this point is removing basically everything from the bottom and back of the vehicle. I was hoping we'd be able to get it to set up. I could buy heavier duty motors online if I wanted to, but uh, at this point it just seems like it'd be easier to basically just put this on the bottom. If you have stronger motors, this system would work for you. Basically we just have the remote and receiver combo, but it doesn't work unfortunately in this case just due to the fact that the vehicle has quite a bit of weight. So what we're gonna do is basically just glue this underneath and then attach the tires to this. We won't use these just because they're not realistic. So we'll use something that's a little bit more, um, I guess you'd say reasonable for the vehicle. And then we will go from there. All right, so here is the finished product. You'll see it looks like we have functional headlights for the most part, and you'll see we have some obnoxiously large tires. So walking through what I did very, very quickly, we ended up having to take out the interior, so the seats and everything else. So I am glad I didn't add in the windows and everything else just because I wasn't sure if I had enough room. And also at that point, if I wanted to replace them with clear plastic, I can always do that. So what we ended up having to do is I took off the bottom and replaced it with the remote control part or parts. So basically I took off the shell of the other remote control vehicle because the motors that I purchased were not strong enough to move this with the battery. And without the battery, it just moved too slowly. So you'll see we have our on off switch right here. Everything seems to fit fairly well. I can swap out these tires for smaller ones. I do have a smaller pair, but because of the spacing right here, it looks kind of odd. So I just wanted to keep it with the original tires and just kind of see how it works. So you'll see we have our remote control here. It does have weird steering because this is designed to be one of those cars that can kind of flip and go different directions. So you actually, to make it go forward, you have to alternate the directions. And you can see, for example, if we push down on both sides, it'll spin. So there are quite a few different options and you can actually flip it upside down if you want, which is not exactly ideal, but kind of a cool feature. And again, you can go forward back. And if you're interested, you also have the ability to press down and make it rotate or up. 
and it'll spin different directions. So we do have a fully functional vehicle and if we're interested, we can always pop in some additional plastic pieces to act as the windows. We could probably try to move around some of the parts inside and potentially make room for the internals, but most of the time you're probably gonna print out plastic and paint that anyway. So all in all, everything's finished up. It's completed and working as expected. So the next project is actually on the printer right now. And that's just kind of a bit of a sneak peek. So if you want, you can take a look back at the channel. I'll probably be done with that one in the next two weeks. I'm hoping that's gonna be much better than this one as this did not really go as expected, but still overall worked out. So if there's anything you want to see or if any, there's anything you have questions on, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.